Please be advised that this video is for the sole purpose of entertainment. Any views of purely my own are subjective and may not necessarily be true. I do, however, do extensive research for all of my videos. All photos have been found on the public domain. I am using them under the Fair Use and Fair Dealing guidelines. I urge everybody to do their own research. Well, hello, it's Murky Meg here. It's Wednesday the 11th of March and it seems that Harry has fallen victim to a prank. Now, Prince Harry spoke with a pair of Russian YouTube stars, apparently while he was in Canada. So it was a couple of weeks ago. He believed that he was speaking to Greta Thunberg and her father, but instead he was actually talking to two Russians who are notorious pranksters. People that they've pranked in the past include Elton John and Bernie Sanders. So Prince Harry had told them during this phone call that life was much better since he and Meghan left the royals. Now, I have to do a disclaimer here. It's not been verified that this is Prince Harry, although all the media are running with it as Prince Harry. And I think we will only know if this is him if Buckingham Palace shoot it down. If they shoot it down and say, no, that's not him, it's not his voice, we know that it wasn't him. However, if they remain silent or say, we are not going to comment on this matter, you know it's him. So some of the contents of the phone call were actually quite bizarre. And while we know that Harry likes to attach himself to the woke quotes along with his wife, he said some damning stuff, to be perfectly honest. He said that the world was being run by some very sick people. When he was asked about Mexit, he said, mm, it's probably a conversation for another time. There are a lot of layers to it and lots of pieces to the puzzle, but sometimes the right decision isn't always the easy one. I can assure you, marrying a prince or a princess is not all it's made out to be. Really, Harry? Your untold riches is not worth it? Hmm, not making yourself look very good there. He said, this decision certainly wasn't the easy one, but it was the right decision for our family, the right decision to be able to protect my son. And I think there's a hell of a lot of people around the world that can identify and respect us for putting our family first. But yeah, it's a tricky one, but we will start a new life. He said that he, because he was in the military for 10 years, he is now more normal than the family would like to believe but certainly being in a different position now gives us the ability to say things and do things we might not have been able to do. And this one's a doozy because he doesn't seem to have much of an awareness of what's going on around him because he says, seeing as everybody under the age of 35 or 36 seems to be carrying out activist roles gives us the opportunity to try and make more of a difference without being criticised. <laughs> He chuckled at that one, apparently, but is he on the same planet as everybody else? He's the world's biggest hypocrite. He was asked about being stripped of titles and losing royal privileges, and this is what he said. No, no, again, you mustn't believe what you read. No one has stripped us of our titles. Because of a technicality within the family, we are earning money separately from within the family structure. Then we obviously have been asked not to use our titles in order to make money, which we would never do. But the press managed to jump on that to make it look like we had been stripped. Well, I have to beg to differ there, Harry, because everybody knows you've not been stripped. Everybody knows that your title are in limbo, you're just not allowed to do them or use them. So nobody's got the wrong narrative here. You just think that we have. So again, skewed mentality there. He was asked about his charity work. He said, I think at the moment, my wife and I think we are being directed towards starting a foundation, but we actually decided there's probably enough foundations out there doing amazing work. And there's a hell of a lot of money being passed around the world. And there are so many problems. But we thought we'd just take a moment to see if there was some form of another organisation or a different ent entity we could create that could bring people together rather than us just starting a foundation. We don't think the world needs necessarily another foundation from us. So we're just taking a bit more time to think about how we can use our platform and how we can use our voice to try and encourage real change and real difference as opposed to, you know, small incremental changes. So they are planning on world global domination, I think. They don't want to do it in their foundation because I believe that doing it within a foundation means reporting 
financially and these financials being available to everybody and that leads to scrutiny they want to be able to kind of work around it and create their platform but also benefit it massively in the long run because that's ultimately what they wanted to do the manifesto said that they wanted to be independent to be able to financially support themselves to do that they need to make money and they need to find a way to make money a foundation would be would have been the perfect opportunity because they only need to give five percent to charity what else have they got in the pipeline that's what i'd like to know something big's coming i think and then it all goes southwards on donald trump he said the mere fact that donald trump is pushing the coal industry is so big in america he has blood on his hand but trump will want to meet you to make him look better but he won't want to have a discussion about climate change with you because you will outsmart him remember he thinks he's speaking to greta He's asked on how he feels about Prince Andrew and he said he has little to stay on that. He makes it very, very clear that whatever he has or hasn't done is completely separate from me and my wife. He then goes on to say we operate in a different way inclusively and we are focusing on a community and we are completely separate from the majority of the family. Wow. Well, let's talk about Donald Trump for a minute. He's having a go at Donald Trump because he says that he is got his blood on his hands because he's involved in pushing the coal industry. It's believed to have happened that Harry supposedly spoke at a JP Morgan event and is in the in talks with Goldman Sachs. Both of these companies have invested billions in fossil fuels. And worst of all, they invest billions in fracking. Now that's an environmentally destructive process. So he is condemning people that push this yet he doesn't want to look within himself and think well, the company that I may or may not be working with is doing exactly the same, but that's okay because they're going to pay me. Hypocrite. So yet again, he also has a little dig at the royal family. He is well and truly separating himself from them, yet he still wants his allowance from daddy. Is there going to be some sort of backlash against this. It's gone viral across the whole world. Everybody's talking about it. Now, he was also asked about climate change, something that Harry has been very, very vocal on, but doesn't actually practice what he preached. Remember the amount of trips across the Atlantic that he's doing at the moment. He is a huge carbon guzzler. So he said, unfortunately, the world is being led by some very sick people. So people like yourselves and the younger generation ones are the ones that are going to make all the difference. Remember, he's talk he thinks he's talking to Greta. People need to be woken up and the only way to wake people up from what effectively is a consciousness crisis, oh, consciousness crisis. Is that like being unconsciously biased? Buzzwords, Harry, have you got all of this off your missus? So people need to be woken up and the only way to wake people up from what effectively is a consciousness crisis is I think you need to be doing extreme things. What like hopping across the Atlantic every other week. What you need to do is to make a real big changes that actually shock people and that's the shock factor that wake people up. Well, so what exactly are you doing, Harry, about the shock factor? You can do as many speeches, as many Instagram posts as you like. Until you practice what you preach, you will not really be taken seriously by the rest of the world. Yet the pranksters asked him about using private jets and he said, unfortunately, there's very few alternatives. We have to fly on commercial planes all over the world, nowhere near as much as people who do it for a night or weekends. Well, they did in Italy, so let's not forget that one. Certainly for my family, protect my family from these people. You can well understand. I have to put protections and safety of my family first, and these people are never ending. Again, you are justifying you taking a private jet for reasons that aren't really there. You have all this security, so you should be fine. What you're doing is that you are curtailing to your wife's wishes by flying all over the world by private jet. He was asked about his opinions on the media. The best advice I can give on that is to be able to see through the fear. What they don't understand is the battle we are fighting against them is far more than just us. So I think one of the, what I've always believed, one of the strongest ways to change mindset and to be able to raise consciousness and be able to create self-awareness among people is to challenge the media and say you have to have a responsibility and you are accountable for everything that you you're feeding people because you are brainwashing people so this is the bigger 
picture. We know for a fact that Harry has this intense hatred for the press and by proxy the people now because the people of Britain now believe the press. It's palpable, we know that, there's nothing new here but again it's cementing the fact that he absolutely hates the press until he needs them for something that he is promoting. I think what I'm going to take home from this so-called prank phone call is that Harry is one huge hypocrite. He is a champagne socialite. He likes all the trappings, but also wants to look like he's doing something different when ultimately he really isn't because he's not practicing what he preaches. It seems like he's a very angry man nowadays and he's pointing one finger at the royal family and the other finger at the press. He believes that the royal family and the press killed his mother and no amount of justification will ever do that because he has a little devil on his shoulder whispering and and stirring up the pot. She's winding him up into a frenzy and something's gonna snap. Unfortunately, what's actually happening is that he's being gaslighted by Meghan. I think that she has convinced him everything in his family and his life was wrong before her and that they can change the world if only they stick together, but they must stick together. It's us against them. What I would like to point out is that if they were still properly under the Buckingham Palace fold, so if they were under their wing, this call would have been vetted. They would have been researched and they would have told them, no, it's not the real deal. But unfortunately, Harry goes, oh, got a call from Greta Thunberg. Oh my God, yay, Greta, hello. Hi, I'm Harry. Then, you know, it's like, stardom beckons. He wants to associate himself because he thinks he's woke. He thinks he's the ecological saviour of the world and he wants to kind of stand beside Greta. Wrong standing mate. And also, she's fake. It was a prank call. It's a disaster beyond compare because everybody is now talking about this. He's got fooled and he said some extremely stupid things. How do you think Buckingham Palace are now dealing with this this morning? They must be running around like headless chickens thinking, what has he done again? Are they going to clean up his mess or are they truly just going to leave him to fend for himself and get attacked by the wolves? I'd love to know your thoughts on what you think of the prank call. Do you think it's real? There is a short version out there on YouTube. I've put it on my Twitter account. I've pinned it. So if you want to go and have a look at it, have a listen to see if you think it's Harry's voice. It sounds very similar to him, but I know that a lot of people are extremely good imitators of voices. So it could very well be a hoax of a hoax. I'm well aware of that. Let's just see how Buckingham Palace handle this, shall we? Because their next step is the way that we know whether it's real or not. As always, I would love to know your comments on what you thought of this prank call. Do you think it was him? Do you think it was funny? Do you think it was shocking, the things that he said? I'd love to know your thoughts. Thank you very much for watching. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, hit the notification bell, and also that like button. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank all of my followers for all the tips and all the emails, DMs that everybody sends to me. It really is greatly appreciated. So thank you very much for watching once again.